uh, let me take this uh, first opportunity to share my thoughts on how should we go about this uh, from the side of uh, the church ministry and also from my experience uh, with the recent uh, sunflower edition. So uh, like uh, what we have seen in the video, we have we already tried to give assist them uh, through professional counselors. But one of the main challenges was those users they are not ready to disclose their addiction to their families or friends. And it was not uh, possible from a site to refer them to uh, medical rehabilitation because they need support from families or friends. But they don't want to disclose their identity as drug users. So I think that was one of the main challenges for the users to come out of addiction. And for that reason, I think that uh, the church has a responsibility to sensitize on the use of drug, uh, drug, addiction, uh, drug abuse and use, and also how as a family, as a parent, or as a church to support to those, uh, to those people who are already uh, dependent on drugs. I think that is one of the first steps our church and society should educate and sensitize our congregation and parents. Uh, that is one thing that I think uh, is important. The second thing is, uh, the second problem is it is, it is all arising uh, because of our culture of shaming and blaming. Uh, so when you say drug, drug kamamnishina, we use those terms in derogatory terms and in shaming other people. You look like a drug addict. That itself is a, you know, shaming, that itself is a derogatory term. So I think shaming, the culture of shaming, we should eliminate the culture of shaming. Uh, that is one thing. And also uh, the idea of blaming, self-blaming and blaming by others. Uh, we always take, uh, you know, take that side. And also uh, blame on ourselves. Lord, what, what have we done wrong that our children is into addiction, right? Self-blaming. The idea, theologically, to be called uh, retribution. What wrong have you done that we, you know, this curse is upon us. So, the idea of shaming, the idea of uh, blaming and taking self-blame, I think uh, we should eliminate those. And also, I have uh, uh, suggest, uh, I also shared earlier, how to deconstruct and also how to reconstruct the image of those drug users. How can we create the image of drug user in a positive way and not in a very negative or derogatory way? So we, we need to deconstruct and as well as we need to reconstruct a different images of drug user where people will you know, accept them positively and will extend their hands to help those users come out of addiction. I think these are some of the prior steps if you want to fight off this addiction. That only after that medical assistance will come. Unless a person admits that he's a drug addict, it is very difficult and we are facing the same situation with those users as well. Um, and if possible, if NBCC can you know, uh, collaborate or churches can collaborate with the rehabilitation center and give assistance to those drug people, uh, drug users emotionally and also spiritually to boost them, their, their souls and broken spirits. I think that is also much needed along with the med uh, medical side. So I think church should interfere or at a larger scale NBCC can intervene uh, in, in such a situation. Uh, one of the reasons I had, uh, I had the chance to interview four of the Sunflower users, they are all now uh, have come out of addiction, but one of the reasons why they gave up drug is not because the drug is bad, but they cannot, uh, they cannot uh, support themselves financially. So financially, it was very challenging for them to, you know, procure those drugs. So they had nowhere to, you know, and so, so some of them, they started stealing even ships, gold ship, and then they would sell it to the market and then buy drugs. Some, they would stay uh, in the fly, near the flyover in Dimapur, midnight, they would stay there, they would rob someone else, uh, you know, wallet, phone. So uh, they realized that it is not good and healthy, and they cannot afford it. So affordability was one of the reasons why they gave up drugs. And in one of the villages, they cannot even smoke Afane. Afane is see, considered very, uh, very affordable thing, right? And nobody cared to, you know, put a rope on Afane. But see, uh, because of this sunflower, people are stealing even Afane from the kitchen and selling it to others. So it was not possible even to, for them to smoke Afane peacefully. So they, the situation has become very worse in many of the uh, churches in Sumeria. So this is a grave concern. and. 
uh, those concerns which I've shared is like from the side of church, if we can sensitize, if we can, you know, deconstruct and reconstruct the image of the uh, drug users, and if the church's parents can, you know, change their process about drug users. I think that is one of the very things that we have. Uh, let me comment a little bit on what you have said just now. First thing about drug users, a lot of them are on self-denial. When you talk about it, this is nothing, just personal or recreational use, nothing harmful, I'm not harming anybody, no. They are always on self-denial, okay, to move on. Number two, fear of disclosure. Manu para chanile, manu para nachanimo, like nachanimo. This is a very secretive behavior. They'll do it, look like in the car, openly, they'll never, never do it. It's a very secretive behavior. Why? Because of fear of disclosure. And why fear of disclosure? Because of the big bad word stigma. Drug using and alcohol at least has some acceptability. We don't mind, are you, Nisal again, we don't mind so much. But drug user, Nisal again, the society hates so much. It's to the point where they're so much stigmatized and, uh, and uh, ostracized earlier. We have had some very bad experience in the 90s and 2000 decades. So, because of that very bad word stigma, they are just not having the guts to come out. Families having this problem just doesn't have the courage to admit. This is one big problem with our family. One thing about our, family, uh, our society is, I think culturally, even I practice mental health, even in our hospital, a lot of them feel hesitant to talk about the problem. Why? Culturally, it is seen as a weakness. And then we go to, ah, puy, puy, nakubi, nakubi. Manukan janile soro, soro kota. So, mental illness, drug abuse, they're all interconnected. By the way, drug abuse con contributes to 20% of all our mental illness in Nagaland. Okay. So, a lot of uh, intermixing and complicated interrelationship between drugs and mental health. So, uh, our culture does not quite admit open uh, admitting of your problem. So these are some of the obstacles we can encounter in the church. But as a church, we have the full freedom to say anything you feel like. And we can always ask these people to always seek help. They need help, I tell you. They need help, professional help. So that in, 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 in one way the church can, in one way we were asking how the church can contribute. In this way we can help encourage our family people to come forward. No problem, sorry, come on, hey. It's just like, just treat this disease just like any other disease, no. <clears throat> okay, thank you for this time. Uh, I just want to highlight what we are doing. Uh, firstly, for demand reduction, for demand, uh, demand reduction, first we are doing detoxification camp. Detoxification camp for one month, or if they need two months, it depends upon their demand. Village, Bustija is village level, we will talk with the church, or village council, jointly, they will uh, organize and with the KBBB Youth Department, we give technical assistance. We will talk with the medical department, uh, administration. We do not also talk to the American key technical uh, assistant. The whole is there. I can get American technical assistant there, the village level there. And town will be what level there. American, uh, we have, in one town, we have uh, 14 ward, including one uh, uh, village, we have 15. So, what wise the American detoxification kit can say? That we, American Indian, right? Do administration, bra, medical department, bra, or Koyama, where we could buy, so I am American Health Prison, Community Ministry, it is an ongoing ministry. Detoxification kit also an ongoing ministry. And if you detoxification kit a club, or no way. So, what we do is, if they want to continue, if they want to continue, American Rehabilitation Center is part Rehabilitation Center to part time, or if they say, oh, I'm going to do a job, I'm going to do a job, well, I'm going to take care of it, well, I'm going to do one, I'm going to get to see the Rehabilitation Center today, I'm going to refer to it, I'm going to take care of it, and secondly, KBBP Youth Department, we have started Rehabilitation Center. If you do Mr. Sanity, I say, 
इस सीजन में ले जो स्टार्ट हुए से स्टार्ट हुए में क्या भी है सी स्टार्ट इन एवरी ना बल्कि टेक्निकली साउंड होने के लिए एंड वी आर इतनी अमेरिका पूरा जो अमेरिका ये भी भी है मिशन प्रोजेक्ट भी सो वी कैन असेस सम मनी सम अमाउंट इट इट फॉर रिहैबिलिटेशन मिनिस्ट्री वी कैन असेस सम मनी एंड इट यू रा अमेरिका इट यू रिहैबिलिटेशन सेंटर लो अमेरिका मिशन सेंटर के भी भी मिशन सेंटर है यू रन कुरियर से एंड फॉर दिस एवेंटेस एवेंटेस प्रोग्राम वी आर डूइंग सॉफ्ट फिल्म ऑन इफेक्ट्स ऑफ ड्रग्स एब्यूज सस्टेन एब्यूज इट यू अमेरिका ना पता दे कोई ना पता दे वन ईयर यस वन ईयर बैक अमेरिका निचू ना पता दे वी हैव से वन फोर्टी विलेजेस तो सब मनुवैक टेक कर वीडियो बनाओ दीजे सॉफ्ट फिल्म बनाओ दीजे इट यू द इफेक्ट्स ऑफ सस्टेन एब्यूज आ गए Under 25 volleyball tournament to give awareness. Under the team choose life. In our arena, under 25 volleyball tournament. In our arena, prize we have given category prize or license. So first prize uh, 50,000, second uh, second 30, uh, third and in consolation, third consolation in our arena. And for now for four years we have been uh, doing this ministry under 25 volleyball uh, tournament for the awareness of uh, uh, addiction. And thirdly. This uh, supply reduction for supply reduction with the administration and with the police, with the civil societies, we had a meeting. Uh, I mean, meeting like I said, meeting like I do because for this sunflower, this longwa, chenmu, these are uh, men for men to uh, rasta gali do it. Just we do ra. Kini ra puru boko. I mean, discuss puri je, discuss puri na. Uh, one day, SP called me up and he has recorded, uh, recorded me. If you law agencies can take come to the car, then police, police can call over again. So police can get up to a bar clear duty for for three and a half months. This observation came to the police job, and then more than sixty eight, sixty eight months. I think they only be done during the fifty eight months during the police. So two months ago, then a lot of rehabilitation system will be changed. But I am unaware that how that we can get the डिटॉक्सिफिकेशन के ये तो दिसे ठीक है ना सम ऑफ देम एंड हम भालू जैसे कुछ बातों की दिया एसपी पर कोई ऐसे तो रिलेट कर रहे हैं ऐसे तो अमिता लोग मेन टारगेट तो लो एजेंसीज़ का ठीक हो बोला गया ताकि वो इसे बोले तो ये सप्लाई डिटॉक्सिन डिटॉक्सिन जो काम भाग रहा है और ये टाइम भाग हो मोन ने अमेरिका में थे आंगमी जैसे कि कोई माँ बने स्कंपरा कुड़ा नहीं ना एक तो मेरे को कुड़ी देखी से कुड़ी देखी से लोग वाले भी क्यों हुए से इतने डिपार्टमेंट दे जो कुंडा इतने थोड़ी को थोड़ी ने लोगी ना आएगा राखी को राखी इतने तो अरो पिक्चर ने लोगी ने जिस कुड़ा ने कुंडा देखी से अरो इतने पिशाच यात्रा भी ना पाए अरो कुंडा तो अमेरिका में इतने सिविल मूवमेंट नेक्का आ से इतने पर अमेरिका तय ने कॉल हो वी हैव रिक्वेस्टेड एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन अमेरिका लगा कोठा नो थका था कि ये थोड़ा मामी लोग प्लीज तो रिलीज देना उनको भी इन आर कोई से पहले भी इतनी माना है सो पिछड़ी ने जैसे ले पहले भी लास्ट से इतिहास को निजे दाल में कुछ कारा है कौन है तुम लोग पाइसे इधर डिटोडे ना इन्हें का वहाँ पर अमेरिकन विद द डीसी एंड एसबी और उनसे डिस्कस करन सक्सेस स्टोरी भी ऐसे बोले भी ना पाया चल भी पीछे ऐसे तो अमिगन अमिगन वाला साइड पे फॉर आस मोम डिस्ट्रिक्ट दिस सांफ्लोर अच्छी बोले तो सांफ्लोर आए ऐसे बोले भी वे हैव बी फाइटिंग विथ दिस प्रॉब्लम ऑब्वियस प्रॉब्लम फॉर सो मेनी इयर्स फॉर सो मेनी इयर्स मोर देन हंड्रेड इयर्स नाउ तो अमिगन इट यू कुरी � अमीर हमारे केबीबीटी चर्च में भी और भी जाकर करोड़ी स्टार्टअप कॉम में स्ट्रीट इधर पूरी जगह लगे चर्च पर जो पूरी लेकिन उन लोगों को इन्हें फाइव डेज पे अमीर हमारे लोगों की स्टार्ट पूरी से स्टार्ट पूरी में इधर लोगों जाएं इसलिए को लेकर फॉर इनफॉरमेशन हाँ इधर इन्हें when we say detox Croatia, nah, quite often the church goes on a detox campaign. Nothing wrong with that. Only thing, uh, know the concept. 
Detoxification means we don't detoxify the toxins. That is what is made to be understood. Hmm. We don't detoxify the toxins. No. It is just a process where the acute phase of withdrawal. When you give up your drugs and your alcohol, you will experience withdrawal. I told you. Withdrawal is a very, very distressing experience. Within two to three days, they will experience acute pain in the body. So here in the detox, detox is a restricted setting, a special room where you have no access to alcohol, drugs, heroin, suntour, no nothing. So you experience an extreme form of body pain and aches. Very, very difficult to go through. So what happens is during this detoxification period, it lasts for three weeks to one month. He has rightly said, 21 days to 30 days. During this time, we give them some medication to help ease out the crisis. Pain reliever, some sleeping tablet, to help ease out the situation so that they come out feeling a little more comfortable. After two weeks, three weeks of the acute phase, they'll become much more comfortable. They'll be able to sleep comfortably without medical uh, prescription. They, they will be able to be in a good mood, they'll be able to eat well, and they become more amenable to counseling. The first two, three weeks, though, no amount of counseling will happen, because they're in pain. So this is how a detox program goes. One month is sufficient. After that, that is just the first stage of treatment, okay? Just the first stage of treatment. After that, if you send them back home, 99% will relapse and go back to the the drug taking ways. What I suggest is go to a rehab. In our Kohima, we have a two, three very good rehabs that, that are expert in dealing with this situation. Ripa rehab, Shalom rehab, and uh, youth mission rehab, so like that. All the, street, all the street must come up with their own local rehab. So a rehab program, a stay of minimum three, three months. According to studies, you experience craving even after two, three months of giving up your drugs. After the acute phase of uh, withdrawal is over. Even after five, six months, you experience craving, sleeplessness, restlessness. It becomes very difficult situations to, to cope. So a lot of them go back even after one year of complete cessation of your habit. That is why a stay of three months or six months or one year. Or if possible, the longer you stay in a rehab, the lesser the chance of falling back. That is why, as far as possible, and as long as you possible, you try to work in a rehab for as many days that your resources will allow you. So this is how we prescribe okay. Now, in our Nagaland context, a lot of our clients are fed up of rehab, in and out program. <laughs> rehab, that I I mean, I don't know that, so. Many of them get fed up of going to rehab. So I give them another option. If you're an opiate user, like uh, Sunflower, we have the option of our OST, Opiate Substitu Substitution Therapy, OST Center. All the districts have now. Nagaland has about 32 centers. In Kohima, we have uh, one, two, three, three centers. One in Zakama, one in Nana Hospital, one with our Kripa that caters to the needs of these people. Here we give them a drug known as buprenorphine that helps them to tie over the withdrawal. They can remain on this for a long period of time, no problem, and they can function normally. Health improves, family relationship improves, uh, psychological health improves, your occupational functioning improves, every aspect of the individual improves with OHC program, if it is properly uh, monitored. Here also they misuse and they abuse once in a while, but that's okay, that's beside the story. But the good side of this program is a lot of them have recovered. Uh, we have seen many success stories uh, with this uh, program. So this is the government's intervention of uh, with this OST program. That is all, another option, okay. The other option in our Naga context is, if you don't want to go to a rehab, don't want to do OST, there's still another option that is still there, that is our prayer centers. A lot of prayer centers now have become skilled in dealing with these people. No. So in Kohima, we have one or two prayer centers where people would like to go and, you know, tie over. 
So I am open to all kinds of options that works okay. And I tell you, among the counseling uh, motivation that I have experienced, spiritual counseling is a very powerful, powerful motivation uh, uh, factor. So you can uh, give them the option also. Some directly say, I'm going to pray and tell you, go, no problem. If Baal Bhubale has said, I'm going to pray, no problem. Don't say no. So this is my experience, okay? Yeah. Okay, okay. 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 <laughs> we all agree that to treat a drug user, we need a holistic approach. That is spiritual, physical, and psychological. Because physical and psychological, there are lots of agencies doing their own parts. But when it comes to spiritual, uh, we agree that lots of uh, churches you produce are uh, doing commendable jobs. They are organizing things, bringing the <clears throat> alcoholics, the drug users to the kings, and giving them different kinds of lessons. Uh, one of my friends at the other, uh, other ends was saying that it's very difficult for them to disclose their behaviors, their drug use. And we agree that it's because of fear of disclosure. Why stigma and discrimination? Now, sometimes I disagree with the word, some words that we use. Like we say, detox scam. When I come to detox scam, my identity will be disclosed. Isn't it? Why I come to detox? Because of my drug use or my alcohol use. So instead of detox, why can't we use other words? The other day, my <coughs> brother was, oh, he's also a pastor, was the same thing I was discussing with him. You tell people to come for the game, and we all know that uh, the drugs, they don't want to disclose the ident uh, identity, and we put the name as detoxification. Then once I walk to the detoxification, my identity will be with already in the board. So this is just a very uh, a simple, uh, small suggestion that uh, especially for the churches, if we organize, yeah, if you organize a game, uh, instead of detoxification, it will be good if you put other attractive words. Yeah, yeah. More user-friendly words. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Good point. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the response of the church towards addiction is, is all as a clock. <laughs> Abang was started in 1897 in Murumi And when it was started, they had four resolutions. One resolution was not us Christians who start wearing dhoti. Thank God we're not wearing that. We have not been successful. And I'm very happy. Second, Second resolution was, not us with bury the dead. And then we have successfully achieved that. Third one was, we would stop consuming opium. That was done by the missionaries, Dr. Turk and all those, uh, Haggard and Perry. So these three missionaries took this initiative of addressing opium addiction up, uh, by the church that was consumed by the people. And we have still, we're still struggling with that. And why? Why are we still struggling with that? Is I think over all the years, we have placed so much of emphasis on winning the soul that is lost. Our, I think 95% of it was focused on winning the lost souls. That we are, we are still doing it. But now, working with souls, working with human beings that are losing every day through addiction, we're still struggling with that. It's because our priority, we have changed from that physical to the spiritual world. And we are so focused in activities about saving souls rather than saving the lives that are enslaved through by addiction. And that's one. So, um, 
for so many years that we have been dealing with this, now one thing is, as Christians now, what do we do? So one thing our brother has been talking about um, is to, to build a resource, a team of resource persons that would deal, especially as churches, as Christians, is to deal with the primary prevention, our messages which churches have. Churches, all churches need to do is ring the bell and then you have people in the church. Churches need to spend adequate resources and time in primary prevention. And in to spend time in primary prevention, one thing that's needed is to build a team of resource persons who will go through all these youth groups to deal with that. You see, the other the, the problem of uh, dealing, setting up rehabilitation centers, we're dealing with symptoms. The primary cause, what, what are we doing as a church? We have become very successful in building buildings. Most of you know, church pastors are excellent contractors <laughs> in building buildings. Very good. But when it comes to saving human beings that are struggling with addiction, we have become very, what? We're just letting a few NGOs work with that. And then blame, blame families that are dealing with that. So we have to address all those issues. In terms of theology, yes, we have to deconstruct that. Because if, if a person who is a drug abuser, a drug dependent person is created in the image of God, that has to be, we, we have to promote that. It's not because the parents are bad that they have uh, drug dependent uh, people in the family. It's not because this person is bad, just because he or she is a drug dependent person. That we have to deconstruct some of those things, address uh, stigma and discrimination. But primarily, I think one of the first steps is to use our resources to deal with our primary prevention messages, work in collaboration with uh, NGOs and the government to, to deal with these issues before we have children graduating to becoming substance dependent persons. So, I think for me, what I would take from this is when I go back to my associate, mm. is to spend adequate time and resource mm. building a community of trained people who will respond to primary prevention messages in the community and continue to strive take that message forward before young people are resort to these issues. And in that process, you will have we will have to address some of these issues. Why? Why are we going there? The other is, rehabilitation centers are good. Once people come back from rehabilitation centers, how, what role can the churches take in order to streamline all those things together? Because six months or three months in the rehab is, is a very good place. I have been there. <laughs> I'm a graduate too. Not nice place, no? <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic place. But once you come back home, you need to get back into the mainstream. So what role can churches play? My, my, main, thing, my main concern is this. Can we create avenues to bring back graduates from, of course not from too many rehab rehabilitation centers, but to bring them back into the fold and then create uh, avenues for employment, that is one. Create uh, avenues for relationship restoration, that is the other one and then back into the community. So these are some of the things that um, I will be telling you. Yeah, very nice comment, thank you. Let me comment a little bit on that. <clears throat> Christianity has always been at the forefront of bringing about social change and emancipation. We have seen in India how Christianity abolished sati and so many evil practices in the prevalent in the Hindu society. In America, Martin Luther King got his inspiration from, from the Bible and spoke about the move for the liberation of black and slave men. And today we have a black man who has become the president of America. Similarly, in our context also, a lot of uh, social evils were abolished because of the effects of Christianity, as he has already mentioned one. In the Angami area, one very bad evil practice of uh, Angamis is our adultery. Normally, it was, it was considered normal those days to have two, three wives, my wife getting divorced, she married another husband, like a uh, different father, same mother, 
same father, different mothers, like that kind of stories, no? Which complicates things so much till the end of the world. But uh, otherwise, the overall social bad effects of this adulterous license has been abolished. Credit goes to Christianity. Christianity has tampered our national movement to that extent, you know. So also, today, I think the church is uh, confronted with a very, very big problem. This drug addiction, substance abuse, especially, I say, not only drugs, but also alcohol. We must address this issue. Put them together, name, huh? and uh, address this issue. This will define the future of our uh, generation, next generation. So we must address this issue. This is a very, very pertinent uh, social evil. And the church can do something to bring about some change. Here, our friend has suggested a very, very good thing. We are there to, to help out in our own little world, uh, here on Lake Kohima. But he is talking about a larger scale. We can train a pool of resource person. Every association, NPCC can take up the lead. We can uh, train them here, not in uh, our center. Call all the resource person, I mean, uh, potential candidates from every association. Bring them here and over a period of one week or two weeks now, whatever, hmm, you can invite us. I tell you, uh, we are there to help you out, to provide the technical expertise. Another group, NGO, that can provide uh, from the psychosocial aspect is PIPA, the biggest and the oldest and the most uh, ex uh, experienced NGO in this field of addiction. So we are here. We can uh, provide that assistance. But NBCC should take the initiative of uh, providing that training camp. Instead of, we can't train so many lakhs of uh, you know, people, but resource person, potential resource person from each uh, association, we can bring them here and train. This is a very good suggestion. Maybe that can be one of our resolution today. What do you say? Sir, yes. He's, he's given a thumbs up. Yeah. Okay, actually I'm here uh, for reporting, okay, actually, but uh, I also have serious uh, concern on this particular issue. I have no, it's, it's on a, a serious uh, uh, on this topic. So today, basically, when we talk about this uh, success addiction or success, success dependence, uh, we generally, uh, our thoughts generally goes to boys and men. But today, as we look, as we assess the present scenario, we have a substantial amount of women, you know, substance dependent in our society. But uh, why, you know, uh, earlier the first panelist said hidden and unreached population. There are lots of hidden and uh, unreached population. Why they are not coming out? Because of stigmatization and discrimination. And when we talk about discrimination, let me also say something. We have gender discrimination mm, in substance yeah, yeah, users yeah, also. Yeah. Not only in political arena and other social mm -hmm. arena, but we have very less platforms for you know women who use substance. So today as the churches there, we have come together and talking about the intervention and mm. if you can also think about in that aspect. Mm -hmm. you very know? Good, very good. Yeah. <laughs> and I disagree with Bikoli that government is doing <laughs> Program. Today, as we see in London, we see only few individuals catalyzed by former drug users who are actively working for this group of people. So if the church also, like uh, some panelists have just suggested, can collaborate and give a helping hand to the NGOs, I think you know, uh, we can tackle this problem. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very, very nicely pointed out. One problem with female substance abuser is the stigma is greater with them. Ah, can you read some? Ah, you can look high. No. The shame. The shame that this the discrimination, the stigma is greater with them. That is why they are still a hidden population. And when we talk about substance, the first thing that comes to the mind is a boy, not a girl. No. So we should be an all encompassing, not both genders. Very, very correctly. This is the age of women's liberation. No, no. <laughs> I think that there are some uh, press that we can go on more of them. Yes. Down there. Please feel the free to contribute. Yeah. yeah. And our own. Um, is there any other last ones? Yeah. Thank you, uh, the, the person who's at the 
countries. I have heard nothing un unmotivated. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for the information. Uh, I've received a lot of information and those are, I would say, that uh, life-giving information. So I appreciate that. A very simple question I just want to uh, ask. Uh, this problem has, I would say, uh, is swallowing us up. It's buried, has buried us a lot. And the present, especially the present, uh, present time. Uh, just recently, we had a survey uh, in Buka Town. I had a survey, uh, just a surface in a surface, and I found that there, there was um, a 30 distributary center. We found that in Buka Town itself, which is a very alarming. And uh, 30, 30 distributary center. So. This that's a very big uh, sunflower, what flower, I don't know. We don't know. So, it, and uh, the problem, we know that this, this is swallowing us up. That many churches and many of us don't know how to begin. That is a problem. And one of the church, a leading church, an example church, has boldly, boldly come forward and they have committed to this ministry by building up uh, a kind of um, uh, rehab, rehab, rehabilitation, rehab center, but they don't call it rehab, they call it art of life. Because the fear, uh, rehab, it is also a kind of, uh, uh, yeah, the, 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 I like it. I like it. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah, people have hesitated to come rehab, do rehab also. So they call it uh, the art of life, and where the treat, uh, in a very minimum. Can I on it also? But they have come forward briefly, and but that is a very a solid step they have taken. Very solid, and a lot of just it's been two years, but many recovery they have produced, so, which is very good. But many churches cannot take up that responsibility. And what we see is uh, churches do ministry, but a lot of unorganized, unsystematic. In, uh, also, uh, one time kind of pro uh, program. So I just want to ask, how should we should the church take up this professionally? How should we start? Mm -hmm. Just want to ask this. Yeah, very, very nice. You call you want to say something? Yeah, you want to say something? Yeah, we want to give him post. No problem. The way I see it is the church is to be very strategic about responding to addiction or alcoholism by specific programs, not just one, one program in one year and hoping that everything is fine. There has to be the continuity. If, you, if we as a church initiate even as, as a start, a preventive approach with preventive measures, primary prevention. We cannot be satisfied with one program organized in one church and hope that everything is fine until the next one. It has to be a continual strategy that start that is right from the beginning of the year till the end and be able to measure the impacts in the course of time. And the church cannot do this alone. It needs a community. It needs uh, NGOs for that matter. It needs to partner with different agencies to be able to work that. So prevention is one. The primary message is of primary prevention in Sunday school, start young. Let it be a part of the regular of, of that sermon as well. Not just one sermon do, uh, on the 26th of June <laughs> or whichever Sunday comes after that or before that. Not just one type of event. And then be able to use its resources to to even sponsor people who don't have adequate resources to even go to a rehab. Can the church do that? As a part of its annual budget, be able to invest so much for its members of uh, being able to send people for rehabilitation. And once they come back into the community after a rehabilitation, what strategic programs, realistic programs, can the churches put in place to ensure that these people 
once they come back, if they don't have a source of income, what, what can the church do with these resources? Because the church in itself has abundant resources mm -hmm. as buying power to be able to patronize the services of people who have come back as a, as a part of the recovery journey. Can the churches use their services to bring them back into the fold to create the economic independence as well? And then be able to spend adequate resources uh, building family systems within the church. I think those little things, if the church is very intentional, I think we can just take at least measure. Yeah, very good, very good suggestion. And to supplement on what you have said, uh, your church also must give space to those people who have recovered from the background. You must give them space. The attitude of the church is a little too self-righteous, holier than thou attitude. So we don't give them space. So we must give them space to express and to lead. People who have recovered from the background are the best counselors. So take me. Number one. Number two, I think we need this uh, over the last five, ten years, uh, from my practice, I have observed that a lot of young people are going into Christian counseling. Very, very good. Many Awareness for us, yeah, mental health issues, all these issues. So we must give them space to express their, their expertise you know, in the church by employing them as youth directors or making them work with youth issues. You know. Maybe so, even have, sorry to interrupt, maybe even have a mental health ministry yeah. in the church. Very much. We train professionals. I have always been advocating that. Today, I, I'm really happy, unexpectedly, I, I'm given this uh, wonderful opportunity to express what uh, ever burden I have. But uh, today, I, at the same time, I never expected the, the press also to be here today. But uh, it's just a wonderful thing for me to be here to rightfully express this very, very powerful and very hidden issue in our society. Mental health issues and substance abuse issues. <clears throat> yeah, good. Let me add uh, a few more things. Uh, I totally agree with what Brother Sanjay has, uh, has shared. I think this healing is a process, it's a lifelong process, so we cannot just uh, take him to rehab and then uh, for one week or one month and then forget about him. I think the church should assist him throughout his journey of healing. It's a process and we don't know when it will break off. So I think uh, the church is not a white up event, but it's a healing process, so it's a lifelong process. That is one thing I think we should understand. The second thing is that we should break the chain of vulnerability as an ethic. So I think uh, I don't know why he said that he was, uh, I don't know why Brother Sanju was in the rehabilitation for six months or three months, but if, uh, I mean, <laughs> no, but as a leader, as a pastor, yeah. I was there for a year. Oh, he, he was there for a year, so as a pastor, if we can come up, I was an ethic. Right. I think that will help, you know, yeah. the believers, but <laughs> It is okay. It is okay to be a, a drug user. It is okay. That is the best testimony. Yeah. Alcohol user. Yeah, you can steal. Because of them, I I stopped the word I'm recovering at. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the first step is to you know break off the chain of vulnerability and the, uh, the you know the toxic of this uh, shaming and guilt. So I think as a church leader, if you are big, please feel free to come out. Can I uh, yeah, yeah. Please, sir. no, no, please. please. Uh, I think uh, today we are all uh, very excited. Uh, uh, excited not because uh, so many things are happening, uh, negative things are happening, but uh, excited because uh, we are beginning to find ourselves and also the role that, that we can seriously play. Uh, uh, I think uh, it would be right for me to say this is uh, one of the most uh, serious uh, discussions and also uh, sharing uh, regarding to uh, substance abuse um, uh, in the last uh, six or uh, seven years or uh, even more for that matter. Uh, I remember, my colleagues also will remember, we have had a one, uh, one time or twice um, ministry to the alcoholics. Uh, and then uh, uh, some uh, churches uh, here in Kohima were able to follow up they were even able to include uh, the, uh, some amount of money for, uh, uh, for uh, the alcoholics in their budget. 
and uh, some uh, pick up uh, the ministry of uh, doing camps and uh, so on and so forth. One uh, such uh, camp uh, just uh, ended uh, a month ago, or, or less than a month ago. And uh, there was uh, an SOS cry last night from uh, some of uh, the members who attended that they are on the verge of uh, going back to their old uh, uh, system. Uh, so um, I uh, personally gave uh, some uh, personal uh, uh, message and said, it is not enough for you to uh, take uh, those people and then uh, leave them after the camp is over. Uh, you should uh, reach out to them. You should send the pastors to uh, their home and then uh, bring them, uh, talk to them. If not, uh, you know, they will, uh, they will go back again. Uh, in two months time, all of them will go, uh, go back. So uh, we are very poor in a follow-up uh, 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 method or uh, action. Very good in organizing, uh, very emotional, and uh, we do a good job, but uh, we don't follow up. And I think that that's uh, one of the problems of uh, the church uh, that uh, we normally uh, have been uh, observing. I'm so happy that uh, KBBB uh, took off uh, with, uh, uh, with lots of our struggles. Uh, I remember talking uh, with uh, your ES when these things was uh, cookie, and then I encouraged him. Then uh, very soon, I'm sure in uh, Nokla, uh, something is also going to happen because uh, one of the pastor, uh, pastors there called me up and said, uh, uh, I forgot that the name that you were suggesting about because uh, our church is meeting and we want to start uh, something. We don't know how, but uh, we just wanted to start because Nokla is becoming a critical uh, uh, place uh, for this uh, sunflower uh, uh, business, you know. So um, here and there people are beginning to, um, uh, to be aware and now taking some actions, uh, even though slow. I will confess, uh, um, where is the Qingyin? Qingyin and my problem, my sin, okay? <laughs> Two of our yeah, sin. Uh, we are writing, uh, we have been uh, working on one booklet, um, Ministry to uh, the Alcoholics, not uh, not actually um, specifically to the alcoholics, but also to uh, substance abuse. Uh, 14, 15 pages only, but uh, we were not able to, to come up uh, with the final uh, product yet. And uh, there we have uh, suggested that all the associations under MDCC should have a rehab. Uh, 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 let me use the word uh, rehab uh, because of uh, lack of a better word uh, for now. Uh, rehab center. Um, so um, we call it a spring of hope, spring of hope uh, center or something. So that uh, all the district headquarters will have that, and uh, the church, uh, the church, the association uh, will run, uh, will run that one. Now we are. I think uh, today we are uh, more educated, we talk about uh, supply uh, reduction, harm reduction, and also demand reduction, and uh, later on uh, we talk about these uh, uh, preventive uh, measures. Now uh, the church can, uh, can be involved in uh, supply reduction. The church can be involved in uh, demand reduction if we take these preventive measures Seriously, seriously. Now, for now, we are depending only the uh, the law enforcement uh, people or the department to bring down the supply reduction and also the demand reduction. But so long as uh, the customers are there, it is difficult. Uh, you know. Now we also have uh, come to realize that. Uh, um, the personals are themselves becoming uh, the object of uh, bringing all the, these things uh, into, uh, into our uh, small Netherlands. Uh, so, uh, I feel that, uh, you know, um, uh, today, not just uh, this uh, one meeting, but maybe the youth department can take uh, this very seriously 
and then uh, come to uh, what uh, our brother uh, Toshi uh, was uh, talking uh, talking about. I have followed uh, Toshi's uh, uh, life uh, since uh, 1988. Uh, uh, I'm not going to tell you his testimony. <laughs> you know, a wonderful transformation. Uh, 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 Wonders of wonders, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, if uh, we can take a very seriously on this one, NBCC can uh, set up uh, a model uh, rehab center, uh, you know, uh, uh, as an ongoing ministry of uh, the youth department or at uh, the church uh, ministry, whereby people can come and be trained. Uh, we have been uh, looking up to the NGOs, uh, we must thank them, but I think that the church can even be better than uh, the NGOs, can do better than the uh, NGOs. We can give more information, we can give uh, more personal, you know. Uh, we talk about uh, counselors, uh, you know, masters in counseling, masters in this, this pastoral care. But uh, the church is also not observing them, uh, observing uh, these personals into their system. And uh, we are letting them go. They, uh, they become uh, frustrated because we are not using their service. So I think, uh, uh, I hope uh, today's uh, discussion uh, will evolve into uh, something that uh, will be concrete. Uh, yeah, concrete. Uh, just emotionally sharing uh, my joy. Yeah, thank you. Very good suggestion. And uh, in response to the previous query, you know, as to how to uh, how the church should respond, I forgot to mention another thing. One of my main concerns: uh, every church must have a ministry that caters to special needs, a special need ministry that caters to a family problem, in the uh, alcoholism in the family, drug use in the family or any mental health issue, no, or whatever, but uh, a special cell must be there in the church, every church, to cater and see and address the needs of the family, the special need ministry. The church is always obsessed with mission, mission, yeah, going abroad, outside Nepal, the, and the whole Burma and all that. Nothing wrong with that, but I always say, Are, yeah, look back, your own backyard, yeah, we come Kuruli Bishia, so there is also another uh, area where we need to focus. Backyard and Savila. We need to fall back and turn uh, turn back and see our own backyard. Yeah, we attention you want again. This is one area which needs attention. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, has raised a very important issue here. The church just setting up here. I think if that can be done, it would be the a uh, really fantastic one because as, as I presented my uh, PowerPoint presentation, who is an IDU, who is an injecting drug user? There, there is a line saying that the drug user are usually from the weaker section of the society. So many of them, they want to go to rehab, they want to quit their behaviors by going to rehab, but they cannot afford. So many, many. Many drug users, even if they want to give up their drug use, they cannot afford. So if the church can set up and rehab, that would be really a fantastic one. And like <coughs> our brother was saying before, not just by putting them in the rehab, what about if after coming back from the rehab? So here the church also can play a very important role by setting up skill development. Yes. So that they can sustain the livelihood of picking up the aircraft. Yeah. Yeah. Plus personal development, you can utilize them to train other yeah. people in the, from, coming from a similar situation, mm -hmm. stuck in a similar situation. That is how we uh, use them and build them up again. No? So, so many areas where right, the church can be very, very resourceful. First thing, we need to have a, conduct a leadership, uh, I mean, resource person training, uh, starting from the center, NBCC. Can we just take the last question? Yes. 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 Yes.
just yesterday, uh, most of my points were just when you do what I can say, Jan Secretary can say, then like Arakabi can say. Uh, yesterday also, uh, three Buddhist persons from Kohima TF were caught. They were supplying uh, some power trucks and they were also interviews. Now, uh, even if uh, the participations here are less, at least just as I said earlier, we came here with high expectations. So I'm looking forward for a very strong resolution. Uh, not just by ending with a discussion among the representatives here, because uh, this issue is, uh, you know, it's just like one of the representatives said, uh, it's swallowing us. Uh, I recently heard, not recently, I'm just, I keep hearing about uh, a lot from Moka districts, the suppliers are mostly the women folks, and uh, the yeah, one disadvantage, uh, the merit of having, um, not having the check kit is also one. Because of that, you know, the, all the check kits are closed except um, the Kusama and few others, um, the state orders. So this is also one thing that is uh, really having impact for not having the check kits, not being able to check those who are doing these illegal uh, drugs, illegal things inside the state. And uh, another thing is, yes, we also had, uh, I also had a brother who, uh, our, <laughs> these things are very sensitive, I saw, I'm sorry, I might hurt by the wrong message of word, uh, but uh, I also had a brother, my eldest brother was a substance abuse, and um, we tried to bring him out of that happy for quite a long, almost more than 10 years, but we couldn't do so, and my mom and dad was really into pain because of that. We tried to bring him in a group of foundation also uh, in about 10 to 10 years back, but that didn't help because he, you know, he escaped from the foundation again. So um, we we got him a small job and we put him out of his friend circles because he being into that uh, substance dependent, right? That's what you say, <laughs> not addiction. So he has all the all these circles of friends where you um, like user or something. So, since you don't have any good circle of friends, we cannot expect him to improve unless we take him out of the place where he's staying. And fortunately, uh, the God's grace, we got him a small job and he, we took him out of Woka from his colony where there are, you know, the neighbors were to do this um, a bit. Then now he is, uh, he has a birth alone. Now he is not, uh, he do this, uh, drug using user. But the thing is, um, our church, the thing that I want to say is a lot of intervention is required here. Uh, we have informed a lot of the church leaders, the deacons, the uh, stewards. We cannot expect the pastors and reverends to come and pray for them. But at least every church has their own you know, representative from every colony. And those representatives, I feel, you know, my brother, like I say, lost souls need to be, you know, retrieved. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, this is where I felt church has to intervene and then, you know, um, direct or, um, you know, assign them to visit each and every house in their own colony because every colony representative knows how their uh, church members, what they are into it. And therefore, this is what I felt necessary. That is one. And the other thing is, uh, we gonna some. If we have to say about discrimination and stigmatization, uh, it's me also please do it because unintentionally I use discriminate those uh, the drug users or those who are using this substance uh, abuse. So, um, like when it comes, any information or directive come from NBCC, every church really upholds it. For example, our church we had uh, recently we celebrated our year called to be to be, and uh, we had an audit this Saturday. But yesterday, and this is it came out with an order about uh, fasting and prayer fasting. So we postponed that uh, audit also. Just an example, I'm saying that 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 much the journeys are called the NDCC, and therefore anything that comes. Any information or uh, directive that comes from NBCC people to respect, the churches to respect. And therefore, I simply don't want this uh, this discussion to end it here, but um, be inclusive. When you organize any program, be serious. I'm sorry if I'm hurting anybody, but be serious. Include all the churches 
let all the representatives come, you know, disseminate the message as much as possible. Because